What is up guys, it is Keegan here and today I'm bringing you guys the first of the career mode challenges. Today is the Fabrizio Romano challenge and it is a very, very interesting one. So the challenge for this video is we're going to do a five season challenge where I have to take the first eight players reference off the Fabrizio Romano <laughs> Twitter account and see if I can win the Champions League within five years. I think it'll be an interesting challenge because, you know, there's a lot of players who get mentioned. There could be a lot of youth players as well. I haven't actually checked his Twitter account at all today. So I'm recording this on this section of the video on January 10th at 9.22 p.m. Atlantic time. So what is that? Like 1, 1.30 in the UK. So for, for reference and like 2.30 in Italy or something like that. So I'm going to take eight players off the Twitter account. I'm going to pick a mid-table Premier League team. I think it's the easiest way to do it. The reason I'm going to do Prem, obviously there's going to be a lot of players in those that team, the Prem team, which you know, will help us get there to the Champions League eventually. But it gives me the money to actually buy these players and to grow them throughout the team. If I did, you know, a mid-table team in, like, France or something, let, let's say I picked, like, Strasbourg or Lens, like, I would have to, you know, sign those players over the three years and maybe not necessarily actually finish the challenge on time. But let's go to Fabrizio Romano's Twitter. All right, we are here. It's Fabrizio Romano's Twitter. Let's see the players who we get today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enlarge the screen a little bit so we can see. Okay, so the first player we get is Travis Akamea. <laughs> I've never heard of this player before. Is this guy in FIFA? Hold on, I should have I should have FIFA open. Like, so I can actually, like they actually have to be in the game. Is he not in the game? Okay, he's not actually in FIFA 22. Okay, so he's gone. He's out. We can't actually sign Akamea. Okay, we move down. Marcelo Brozovic. Okay, that's actually a really, really good signing uh, for Marcelo Brozovic. Five years might be a problem. He is a little older when I look in here. I should not probably not close this. Brozovic. I think he's, you know, he's a little older. He's 28, so that this actually is good. If we sign him in the first season... We can maybe keep him at 84, 85, 86, maybe the entire way through. That could be a good DM for whatever team we end up picking. So our first player out of eight, Marcelo Brozovic. Next, we have from Reims, or from Michelin, Yen Lis Cajus. This, this feed just came out. I think I saw this. What's, what's this guy's name again? Cajus. Let's see how let's see how good this guy is. All right, 72 overall. All right, he's 21 years old, and he's got a potential of 79. So this guy... Jenlin's Michel Cajus. He looks like a guy who could be insane with dynamic potential. And it could be a good partnership with Brozovic. So, you know, I think that that's a good signing. That's two de more defensive-minded midfielders, though. Which could be a little bit of a problem. He's got good uh, physical, really good passing, and good, you know, defensive stats. He's probably not going to be a cam. Probably more so a central midfielder in a 4-3-3. Is what I'm guessing ahead of Brozovic. Uh, but that's not too bad. You know, with the five year challenge and trying to win it in the fifth season, we'll definitely be able to get him to a mid 80s, I would imagine. So, so that's two players off the list. And it looks like Ekatike is the next player that we get. Ekatike embarrassed Marseille uh, the other week. So that, that's pretty hype that we get him. He's only 65? Are you kidding me? Oh, that's so frustrating. He's 77 potential at least. Um, but, I mean, he's someone who's, we're going to have to, I mean, we're going to probably start him every game. Even though he's 65 overall. But, man, that could be a bit of a problem to get him up to the mid-80s in, you know, five seasons. In four seasons, though, we we should be able to do it. It shouldn't be too too difficult, though. Let's take a look at some of his stats. What is his finishing stat? Like, 72 already. Yeah, this guy... I don't know in simming how much of the stats matter with stuff like this, but finishing is definitely going to be a key, I think, to look out for. So that's the three players we have. Kajus, Brozovic, and Ekatike. Folaren Balogun is the fourth player on the list. I don't think it's great that we got another striker, um, but we'll take a look at uh, Florin Balogun. Um, he is basically a better version of Ekatike. So maybe we go two up top. He can play on the left, and he's got good speed. So maybe we convert him into a left winger in a 4-3-3. I think that might make sense. Uh, but that's going to be hard. Two 65 overall players 
in the team. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge to grow these players to be, you know, the best that they can be in a couple seasons, especially since we have we can't only sign these eight players. Um, so that's going to make it a little bit challenging. So Fuller and Balogun is our fourth player on the list. Next we have Bergvine. Okay, that is huge. Bergvine is actually a great haul for this team as our fifth player. Uh, did I spell that wrong? Oh, I did. Yeah, okay. Bergvine is our next player. Yeah, as you can see there, left winger. We could probably convert him to a right winger. But 23 years old, 80 overall already. That would be huge. That'll definitely help us push towards the European places early, which will give us more games to grow players like Balogun and Ekatike. So uh, for a fifth player, this is a very, very solid, uh, very, very solid player. So look at that. What an amazing set of stats. And saying that Spurs are even looking to sell him, it makes no sense to me. Uh, but we'll move on. The sixth player, I don't think anybody else was mentioned in that tweet as well. So who is the sixth player? Oh, Sven Botman is the sixth player. A solid, solid center back there. 79. He is going to be potentially a 90 overall defender in this team in Season 5. That is a huge get. Newcastle, I don't think Newcastle are going to be able to get him. Uh, over the line in this January window, but we're definitely going to use him in our career mode team here. Wow, just look at some of these stats. So 88 strength. He's really slow. So, I mean, it's a good thing we're simming this career mode and not actually playing it, but Sven Botman is a huge, huge get for this team. No way. I did. I, th I saw him trending. Are we actually going to get Sakaria too? That is a demonic back four or back two. Because we can convert Dennis Sakaria to a center back. And Botman and Sakaria will be a huge partnership. The entire career mode. Wow, that is unbelievable. Wow, look at that. 87 strength. Oh, the pace is just too much. The pace is truly just too much with this team. Okay, this team's going to be pretty sick, I think. And the last player we get... No way. There's no way he is uh, the next player. I promise... I promise I did not know that these players were going to be in here. I promise you that I did not know that these players were going to be... <laughs> that these players were going to be the ones that get Federico Chiesa. This seems going to be insane. It's going to be difficult to get Balogun and Ekatike up. And we probably won't play Balogun. Uh, we'll probably have like a Chiesa, Balogun or Ekatike and Bergvine front three. And then, you know, have... Ber you know, I'm trying to think... You know, Kajus, Abrazovic behind them, and maybe we drop one of the other players into camp. But wow, what a heist this is for the team. Frederico Chiesa. We don't, we can't get him in the first season though because he is on loan at Fiorentina. So we're going to have to get him in season number two. Um, but that is definitely a really good heist. So those are the eight players that we are going to be uh, are going to be using. Now let's actually pick the team we're going to use. We're going to randomize this one. All right, so we're here with the team randomizer. I picked the bottom 10 teams of the Premier League. And, you know, there's some good ones we can get here. Aston Villa and Everton would certainly be the best ones to get. There are a few howlers here which we could get. But let's take the spin. Let's see which team we're going to be using for this challenge. Oh, we get Big Watford. I think this is... So I think this is good, so... One of the things I was worried about with this challenge is if we got a goalkeeper or not. Because um, not getting a goalkeeper, we could run into a situation where we're in real trouble. But I'm pretty sure Watford... I mean, we have Ben Foster, the goal cam and the goal. So that's a W. Uh, the, the cycling GK. So that's a W for early on. But we do have Backman, who... Man, that's going to be tough to get him up there. But we have some good options. There's Mila Sar. Um, probably ends up being the striker of this team, honestly. And we don't have to worry about the other players. Shao Pedro is another really good option in this team. Um, we do have some, you know, some good wingbacks. Eight, oh, no, Aitneri is not in this team. Wow, our wingbacks could be a problem in this team. We don't really have good wingbacks that we can use. Um, we can probably convert some of these players into wingback eventually. In Gakia, he's probably going to be our best option at right back. And then, do we even have a really good left back? Uh, it doesn't look like we really do. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem. But, we got a lot of good players, though. 
We're going to have a really, really solid front three, a really solid midfield, and a really solid centered back partnership. Goalkeeper is going to be tough. We're going to have to really work to get Backman's stats up as high as we can. But that's what it's all about the challenge. That's what the challenge is here for. Five seasons to get Watford with those only eight players at the bottom. Let's get them in the Champions League. All right, we are here into the game. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to leave a like rating and subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out. We're going through with the settings here, and the, the big thing I want to show here is that we're going to be using strict negotiation. And the reason we're going to go with strict here is because it is a challenge, and I want to, you know, make sure this is as, as difficult as possible. I'm usually someone who, who likes to play the games in career mode. I'm really not an expert when it comes to simulations, so I'm still learning, you know, learning my craft, if you will, uh, on how the, you know, the simulations in FIFA work. Back in the day, I used to be really big into the NHL games and simulating there. And there were a lot of things to pick up on about how, you know, players acted in The Sims, what stats were important, and all that. So, a lot of that is stuff I still have to pick up. But for us this time around, we don't really have much that we can do about that. As we are basically solidified in the players we need to pick up as a result of the challenge. So... Here, I'm basically spending my time trying to think of the formation. We don't really have any fullbacks that we can bring into the team uh, that make a lot of sense. Kamara and Ngaki are really the only two fullbacks that are, are worth it in the long run in this team. I was looking at a back three, but even then, we're not going to have three good central defender options going into about season five. So I ended up going with the 4-3-3. I think that best fits the players that I can purchase with this team. Uh, in the next couple of seasons. Coming into this career mode, in terms of staying up, I think the most important thing was to solidify the defense. Sven Baumann, I did a video on the Bruno Guimaraes to Newcastle potential transfer as of today. We'll see if that has become official at any point before this video goes live. But I said Sven Baumann would be a perfect defender to keep Newcastle up, and I'm basically taking that logic and applying it here. I'm going to have him be the first player I sign in this career mode at 21, 79 overall. He's got a lot of room to grow into a special player, and I think he's the perfect player to start this team off. Allows me to buy some more players as well. Obviously not the likes of Brozovic um, to really help solidify that midfield, but you know it'll allow me to go in for you know players like Ekatike and Balogun uh, potentially in this first window. Allow me to play them in the cup. So we make some changes here. Botman joins the first team. You know, still a little bit of work to do. I had King starting in the preseason, but we're going to end up probably playing Hernandez there uh, for the entire season. Well, I know we end up playing Hernandez there for the entirety of season one. Now, Jao Pedro, we sent him out on loan at 71 overall and about 19 years of age. A very good young prospect. And getting him out on loan. Hopefully we'll see his overall shoot up really quickly into the mid-70s. And he can come into the team and hopefully push for a starting spot in the team. Yugo Ekatike is basically going to be his replacement on the bench um, for this for Season 1. We really want to see if we can get his overall up as well. I don't think we're going to end up using him that much, honestly, by the end of the career mode. I think it's likely that he is going to become... Basically fodder to make money off of, as, as you know, as kind of sad as that is. You know, he's a really, really solid player, but in a Premier League save like this, where we're a relegation team, it's going to be really tough to win games in the Carabao Cup and in the FA Cup. So definitely a player that we're probably going to use mainly, you know, to make some money off of at the end of the day. So he is in the club now, and that's two players who have been added to the team. Now, Hernandez is going to start ahead of King. We're going to look to sell King as well, get some more money off of that. But that 4 through 3 is the lineup we are going to go with. And starting the season, we honestly started pretty well. Good big draws here against Aston Villa and Brighton. Obviously not, you know, really sexy results, but they do the job for us early on in the season. Picking up points, putting points on the board early is huge for relegation teams. And right here, a big win against Spurs as well. So we're moving well in the table. We got the first round of the EFL Cup. A big victory there. Unfortunately, those you can see there, we start, you know, the, the tides start to turn. Losing to Wolves and Brentford as we move into the middle part of the season. And as expected, we are in a pretty big relegation fight here. Only a couple points above Leeds in about 17th place. We lose to Crystal Palace 
as well near the middle part of the season. And season one, as expected, is going to be a relegation dogfight. You know, we're pushing it really close to that edge there, and it's going to be tough to stay in the division because, you know, you see there we got some, some discipline issues. Well, not discipline issues, some dressing room issues, some unrest. I'm already under a performance review meeting. You know, they wanted me to finish mid-table in the first season, but really with the quality in the team, as you can see 21 games in, that really wasn't going to be realistic. And right here, we have a big game against Leeds. This is huge in terms of our push to stay in the first division here. Uh, and right there, we take a huge loss. That could potentially be devastating to our push for push for survival, as you can see right there. With 32 games, 32 games done, six games left, we are in the relegation zone. The Brentford, another team in that relegation dogfight, we take a big win away from them there. And we push on here, a draw against Burnley, points on the board matter greatly here. As you can see there, we are now one point ahead of Leeds with two games in hand. And we are, we are right there, <laughs> only need a couple more points basically basically to secure safety 40 points is the magic number it's likely going to be less this time around and a loss to crystal palace actually sim the game against man city and we actually somehow win against man city and right here we play against leicester i'm pretty sure we get slapped up here but actually leads to lose their game as well and that'll be good enough yeah we'll lose 5-1 oh my god but if that is good enough anyway with the Leeds loss as we survive Season 1. This was really the big worry was getting relegated in Season 1. Because if we get relegated, we're basically screwed the rest of the series. There's basically nothing we can do at that point. Now Season 2, it's time to build on this and see if we can finish a mid-table. Bergvine is the first player I'm going to do to try to make this happen. It's going to be a lot of money, but I think he can play in the central attacking midfield role. We had cleverly there for a lot of last season, and he is certainly not going to be good enough for this team in the future. Bergvine, you know, it's going to take a while to transition him into that attacking midfield role, but once he gets there, he will certainly be a top quality player in that position for us. So as we get into season two, you see the Bergvine transfer, though budget at the top. You can kind of tell where the problem with the challenge and the team we rolled is coming in. We really do not have the finances to really fund any more than one of these big transfers a window. And when you're trying to move up the Premier League and get into those top six, seven spots, even to the Conference League, it becomes really difficult when you don't have the money to do so. You know, lucky for us, we have a lot of players that we can sell. Jao Pedro, 74 overall now. Really good loan spell from him. We're going to want to send him back out on loan. Hopefully, we can get his overall up a little bit more. But Dennis has progressed well. Hernandez has progressed well. And if they continue to grow like they have been, then we're in a really, really good spot. Despite the fact we haven't really been able to invest a lot in the team going forward. Della, Deli Beshinu, or Beshiru, I think is how you pronounce his name. I'm really bad at pronunciation, as you guys probably know. Um, definitely a player who could potentially even become a wingback for us in the future. Right here, Sema, a player I was looking to get rid of, honestly, and we can just let him go and get Balogun in return. That's a good move for us. That's another player signed. That's four of the players, actually, that are on our list now signed to the team. Now, that's not to say that all four of them are going to be of, of use for most of this save as Balogun and Ekatike. It's unlikely to really get them into the team, I think, by the end of it. You know, we're just, I think, you know, last season we just didn't make it out of the first round of the FA Cup. We only got through one round of the EFL Cup. It's just not really a good opportunity to grow the team there. Now we're going to let Shell Patrick go out here to Granada again. And then right here was a pretty dangerous message. Ismail Isar apparently had a release clause. Some of the release clauses I find in FIFA to be very weird. They just randomly are on players, which don't have them in real life. Maybe Ismail Isar does have a release clause uh, in his real life contract. I actually don't know off the top of my head. But we're going to make sure we get that deal signed. Because if we let him go for like $40 million, that would be a disaster for this save. We definitely need Ismail Lassar to have any chance of making it anywhere this season. Maybe we could have, you know, put it in a position to get Chiesa, but we really need Ismail Lassar in the team. 
first game of the season, season two, 5 0. I don't know what it is. You'll see this is a trend to start seasons in the future, but we just keep taking L's. We beat Man City again, though, which is a little weird. I'm not, not sure what, you know, it is about Man City that we keep beating. Round one of the AFL Cup, and that is where the problem is begin. And we now have to look for loans for Ekatike. And probably Palingan, we're going to end up keeping. He'll play on the left uh, wing. We're going to work on getting a position change for him. But as you can see, they're 14 games in. We're two points above the relegation zone. Still fighting that relegation battle, which is really frustrating. And being out of the AFL Cup, we have a lot of youngsters that we're just not going to be able to give game time to because of that relegation battle and being knocked out of the cup. Big game here against Everton that we won in a huge match away to Fulham here. A team that you saw we're directly fighting against in the relegation battle and we win that game as well. And going into the halfway point, we're about a mid table here. We're only three points above the drop, but we're making our way up the table, putting some distance between us and those below us. And now in the middle of season two, we're going in for Sakaria. He had moved on to Arsenal. I tried to make some swap deals here, see if I can, you know, save a little bit of money. Not that I thought it was going to work. Um, but we're going to see if we can get the Sicaria deal done and dusted. That'll help, you know, weaken the team above us in the league table while having our center back partnership of Botman and Zakaria solidified as we are going to be converting him into a center back. Just makes the most sense with Brozovic being one of the players we can sign as well use Zakaria as a center back and this should easily keep us in the Premier League as well this season I mean it just lo it looked dicey for no reason you would think we would kick on from that good first season avoided you know avoided the drop you know our players grew well and overall and we we seem to be looking like a team that could push to the mid table but just didn't turn out that way and Zakaria should definitely push that need you know push the needle and get us into that mid table and hopefully next season a big signing will get us into Europe. You see there we do make that change to center back. It's not a big one. It only takes two weeks since he already has that position and is very defensively minded. And right there as you can see there big wins versus Leicester. We start simming through the month of April and you see a loss to Wolves, a loss to Bournemouth, a loss to Burnley. Just too many losses down this end of the season. We didn't make it to about 12th though in the league at this point we draw against Chelsea and season two you know we were expected to make mid-table but we really did not end the season off as we would have hoped for a lot of losses and a lot of draws to end this year off so definitely a lot to look forward to next season to improve on this we were eight points above the drop this season and we were pretty sol solidly mid I would say slightly below mid-table so a little bit of frustration there. I think we probably should have been doing better if we were expecting to go on and make that Champions League and maybe even and win it. That is the goal, to win the Champions League in season number five. Now, Xiao Pedro comes back 77 overall at 21 years of age. That is a huge, huge game for this team. Huge to see him come back from alone and get to that overall. You know, just just awesome to see. Hernandez is at 80 overall, so we're going to keep him in the starting lineup for now as we go in for Brozovic. Chiesa, as you can see, you can see here we're in season three. We don't even have a lot of money. We have less than we had last season, which is insane to think about. And you can kind of start to see the issues with this challenge arising. Chiesa is the prized man for this team that we really want to be able to go and get but he was on loan in the first season and at this point we've basically been priced out of any transfer for Chiesa unless we make European competition so this season is really a make or break season in terms of this challenge can we even make it to the Champions League by season five at this rate if we can't get Chiesa it's going to be really hard to do so but Brozovic will do a great job solidifying that midfield a great defensive presence with him Botman and Zakaria, we should be defensively solid for an entire season now. Finally, we go into a season with a, a, you know, what I would consider a full European level defense. We had, you know, some seasons in Kalu, just not good enough. Um, you know, that basically he just wasn't good enough. And now we have Botman, Zakaria, and Brozovic. As you can see, if we go up there, Botman and Zakaria, both 84 overall. 
Brozovic 84 overall as well. That should certainly be good enough defensively to get into Europe. I make a risky play here, I think, going with Shao Pedro to start the season. I'm getting some offers for Hernandez as well. The only problem is, is since we are limited to the players that we can sign, selling him now really doesn't get us anywhere. Honestly, in terms of, you know, signing Chiesa, we're about 100 plus million off, which is way, way too much to make up. And right here in the preseason tournament, we almost win a piece of silverware. It would have been a pretty cheese piece of silverware to win, but we lose the final of the preseason tournament to Wolfsburg, and we start the season against Liverpool. You want to guess what the result in this one was? Yep, 4-0. Absolutely slapped up against Liverpool. Another poor start to the season there. Just an absolute huge loss. And then we lose to Brentford. I... <laughs> I don't get what the simulation is all about in this game sometimes. Right there, you know, we're, we pulled, pulled back a little bit, 8 points in 7 games, but we're certainly far off the pace, you know, starting off on a pretty bad losing streak, drawing against Leicester here as we move into the middle of the season. And without money to really change anything due to our restrictions, not looking very good. And Brozovic, not Brozovic, Bergvine goes down to injury, putting us under even more pain. Kina as a player, though, he really has come good off the bench for this team in this save, though. Really, really liked him in this team. And, you know, he's done well in the EFL Cup and certainly is a player who we can give a good opportunity to. Despite that poor start to the season, though, come mid-season, we are, you know, slowly going up the table and we are four points outside of a Champions League spot. 12 games in, it's starting to look like maybe this team has come around... Watford, another win there against Everton, a team that we're in direct competition with in the table. Going against Spurs, a big draw here, a team that I think we're second place at the time. And we are just, you know, we are in insane form right now, beating Burnley. It's all starting to look good for Watford here in Season 3. A big opportunity here to qualify for Europe. Champions League might be pushing it but certainly big there. And right here, the Carabao Cup, we are in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup here, and or the fourth round, not the, the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Big chance of here as well for some silverware. We do lose two Spurs on penalty so, so a chance at silverware has gone out the drawer there, but we continue good form in the league. As you can see out there, sixth place, two points out of fifth, five points out of fourth, and it is looking Mighty fine for Watford at this point in the season, 21 games in. However, though, as you guys will come to see, this is where it all falls apart. We lose to Stoke in the FA Cup, which is annoying to say the least, but you can see there, we are slowly dropping down the table. A game here against Wolves. This game is huge in terms of our save. Can we beat Wolves? And make it, you know, further up the table. Yes, we do. Huge right here to get that win against Wolves. The direct competition above us as we push for those European spots. A big win against Everton too. Another team of direct competition. Arsenal, a team who are around us that we really need to be beating. A draw here. It seems like we're getting a lot of points here at this point. But this, <laughs> yeah, as I alluded to, this is what happens. I don't know what the simulation engine is doing here. We lose to Leeds, we lose a big game, and we're in sixth place with 33 games played. In seventh place now, a big game against Chelsea here. We have to get points here, otherwise we might fall too far behind in the top six race, and we lose to Chelsea. And you can see here, this is where the problems start to come in. We had a lot of easy opponents in the part, start of the second half of the season. And now we're playing the big guns. We get a draw against Liverpool. That is huge right there. But we are in 8th place. And with Wolves and Everton and Arsenal to catch up, it's going to be ever difficult. Even though we beat those teams earlier in the season, it just all falls down here. A big win against Burnley as we keep pushing. With two games left, we are one point we out of fifth. Two points out of 5th place. One point behind Arsenal and Chelsea. It has been such a tough season, but we've taken too many losses to some weaker teams around us that have, you know, you know, put us behind the eight ball. We go away to Spurs, a team we have done well against before in this save. I, I was considering going with Hernandez here, but with the, the not the dynamic potential, with the 
uh, the inform, I forget what that's even called to be honest, with the, the plus four he should be better, a draw here not going to be good enough as we are level with Arsenal on 37 points in the last day and who do we get other than Man United, what a surprise just a murderous row at the end of the season and we lose and miss out heartbreakingly on European competition this season Wow, and you can see that we conceded 55 goals, which is insane to even think about, considering how much we improved our defense. And right here, you can see here, they just don't want to sell Kies at the start of Season 4. I mean, like, what am I supposed to do at this point? And I can't really improve the team going into Season 4, missing out on Europe either, considering we've signed all of the players that we have available to us in this challenge. The Bergvine injury really put his development behind and now we basically have to go in for Casius, and he's not really going to be able to change, move the needle for us at all this season. And the challenge appears to be getting away from us. With the, out the extra game time in the Europa League, are we really going to be able to grow the players up much from here? We'll have to see. This is, you know, the challenge can fail here. We have to make the Champions League this season, and we haven't made past ninth in the Euro, in the, in the league table let alone make the Champions League. We were close last season, that gives me some hope. But as I've said, in as I just said, I'm not 100% confident going further with this team. I do try to convert Kajus into a left back. I feel like if we're going to be in season five, if we're gonna have a chance at that Champions League run, him at left back, I think would be crucial to that. We've got another game here to start off the season against Newcastle. You wanna guess how this one goes against Newcastle? You can probably guess what's gonna happen loss to start the season then we go up against liverpool and just a horror show to start the season two losses we come against fleetwood town we get a little bit of a break in the efl cup against good opposition casu you know he starts he does well as you can see there our overalls are going even higher like 86 botman 85 zakaria draw against everton we have an injury to ngakia which is a little bit annoying and you look at here, look at this team. How are we losing so many games to start the season? Come up against Arsenal, we lose here. And the wheels are just falling off for this challenge quickly. Just no wins to start the season. We lose to Manchester United. We have the next round of the EFL Cup against Chelsea. We're doing well in the Cup, though. The EFL Cup has been our friend. We move past Chelsea. A big game here against Leicester. And we do win that 4-0. I think that was our first win in the Premier League. How many games in? Honestly, unbelievable how poor this team has done. And I wonder what it is about the simulation that has this team doing so poorly. We do beat Spurs, though. Of all the teams we played against, we have done well against Spurs, and we finally beat Brentford. It feels like the first time in forever we actually got to beat them. But as you can see there, with the, how difficult the, the Premier League is, it just looks like we are not going to be able to get there with this team. And it's really unfortunate. I was really excited for this challenge coming into this for, you know, coming into this challenge. And I thought we were progressing really well after the first two seasons. It takes us penalties to beat Luton, to beat Luton Town of all teams. Lose to Chelsea in the league. And as you can see the table, we are there though. 27 points. We are in sixth place. A chance to make that top four still despite their really, really poor start. We are right in the thick of it still. Come up against Wolves, a team we've really been having to fight for positions against this season. And they apparently have Asensio in their team now. A big loss to Wolves, though. And against Liverpool, a team we're just never going to be able to beat, it feels like. And we make some rotations here. I'm pretty sure I rotate the team because this is the, the League Cup here, the EFL Cup. That is kind of, you know, at this point, I really want to win that trophy as that could be a way to get into Europe, but we still have to rotate to keep our Premier League spot, and we lose to Dybala is at Liverpool. Unbelievable. The FA Cup comes around. We do beat Hull City there, but as you can see there, it just hasn't gone well. Too many drop points. The competition is too fierce at the top, and we're seven points adrift of that Champions League spot, and, and honestly, it looks like the challenge is going to be a failure this season. We did put a good effort in, as you can see here. We're going to come against Fulham. You're going to see how the rest of the season goes. But, unfortunately, this first challenge is going to be a failure. The Fabrizio Romano challenge and Al, we lose to Fulham at home. We play against Brighton at home. 
and we draw. And this is where the wheels just come off entirely. We lose to West Ham here in the FA Cup too. So we can't even get a cup run to save us here. And that is basically going to be the end of the challenge. We're not going to be able to do Season 5. Really nothing we can really accomplish in Season 5. The goal was to win the Champions League and maybe it was a little bit too hasty or a little bit too ambitious to think I could do it in five seasons. But, you know, with the quality of players we got, I thought it was very much possible. It's just, without, the, without making Europe in Season 3, I think really put us back. Chiesa was available for transfer later on in the transfer window, so the European money would have been crucial. Would have been crucial for us to make that transfer. We could have sold Hernandez, Ekatike, and been fine and gotten keys in and probably really changed the outlook of this team in season number four and potentially qualified for the Champions League as we've been so close yet so far so many times. But... That is basically going to be the first challenge. I really, really enjoyed this challenge despite the frustrations of this team. I think it's a really, really fun challenge. And I think this challenge would have been successful with the team. Maybe like Everton if we would have gotten them. I think we definitely could have done this challenge. I've you know won the Champions League in crazier situations uh, before. But, you know... I think overall a good challenge. Let me know if you guys try this challenge in the comments down below. I'd be really excited to see how you guys get on with this one. As you can see here, we had so many performance reviews. We just could not win a game, it felt like, in the second half of the season. And we honestly probably should have been sacked at this point. But we somehow managed to survive into Season 5. And Season 5, we will not be playing, of course. If you guys enjoyed this challenge, make sure to leave a like on the video make sure to subscribe as well for future challenge videos and the leon career mode if you guys have any suggestions for challenges and videos you want to see in the future leave a comment down below as well i have the next one planned i'm excited for that one i think it's going to be a little bit more successful than this one was but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i will see you guys next time at your 11th place watford with the goal of winning the champions league in season five or sign out